Welcome to a world filled with challenges, temptations, and a barrage of distractions. In the midst of chaos, where misinformation abounds, we're here to be your beacon of inspiration. Welcome to Optimum Ideation Podcast, where we dive deep into the teachings of great leaders to illuminate the path to a better society. In a quest for the best of human ideation, we're on a relentless pursuit to unearth the most profound insights that can elevate humanity. At Optimum Ideation, our mission is clear, to share invaluable knowledge with the future leaders of the world, empowering them to navigate the complexities of an unjust world. All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of Optima Ideation and uh, welcome Andy. Uh, today's guest, he comes to us from across the pond over there. Are you still in Thailand? Thank you for having me, Tim. It's a wonderful opportunity to share wisdom and light with your audience. I believe we're going to have a splendid conversation and be a beacon of light and hope for those still lost in the dark and lost in the fog of the pollution of the mind and programming of their own consciousness. Let's do the work. Yes. Yeah. I, I love that I connected with you because I feel like we are on a very similar wavelength and, uh, you know, I love you are building your platform, uh, to help others, uh, help others find their way. Uh, because it takes a lot of self work to be in a position to help others. And, you know, through our journeys, we, we learn a lot and it means nothing if we don't share it with other people. Right. It takes guts to be vulnerable with others and with yourself to actually stop fighting with who you are deep within and for some people, it's very easy. I know because I was one of them. I was doing what I was told to do. What should I think? My parents used me as an extension of their ego. Mm. My bosses as well. So who was I living? Was it me or who was it? Mm. I was having this shallow existence that was only filled with sadness and grief, but eventually I said, enough, I can only be myself. Everyone else is already taken. So I step in into this destiny of what my soul has wished to experience in this time life. And once I stopped fighting and embrace who am I and understood that I'm not some type of mystic of God or nature, that I'm here for a reason, all things that before in the past were a nuisance, were a challenge for me, dissolve and I step boldly into this new future of doing what I supposed to do. And here I am. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, you know, you kind of took a little bit of an extreme path. I, I kind of stuck here in the U S and stuck to doing my business thing. Uh, but I did take a lot of time to, uh, especially these past six years and developing my own companies. Um, I did take a lot of time with self introspection and, and diving deeper, looking for truths. And I guess that's kind of what led me to this show was I wanted to find out the truths because I feel like the truth, uh, sets us free, I guess is, would be a common saying. But, uh, but it allows you to find, find the real you, I guess, you know, and, and it may be a never ending journey that I'm on and you're on, uh, to find truth and in this existence, but, uh, but at least it, it, uh, allows us to, to see a little bit more of what this world truly is. Eventually, it's all about knowing who we are deep within. It's about this journey 
that starts when you start looking within and as all journeys that could take means by any different ways of travel you can take a bike you can take the car you can take the train and it doesn't really matter because alignment doesn't care how you achieve it until you're walking on the path that has been chosen for you you're doing the work and what is to say that one way of traveling is better or worse than the other it's not possible it's our ego that is judging things we are all equal in the eyes of the god and if that is true what is also true is that we are all part of this universal energy that is experiencing himself through us so it means we are actually the same being and if we are the same being how can we say that we are different or better or worse it's it's ridiculous it is like saying that the left arm is better than the right leg it's nonsense you wouldn't judge an elephant by attack ability to swim and otherwise yeah um yeah i think uh, something awoken in me when i began having children and <clears throat> so you know i don't know if you have children or not but it's like a whole nother opening of and um and uh whenever i had my daughter it made me realize like well i guess getting married made me appreciate women more and try and understand them even better but whenever i had my daughter i just felt like you know i could do this baby no harm it is an extension of me and if i can do this baby no harm then then why would i do anybody else's baby's harm does that make sense it, it makes sense actually in the past in china there was a saying that you should treat every being a man as your brother and a woman as your sister and your elders as your parents yeah. and the younger one as your child so if we would take the same approach wouldn't the world be a better place yes yes yeah and it's just uh i don't know if it's just the culture that's been brewed over here on this side of the world but it is not that it's very selfish and you know masculine even trying to push the women into masculinity and you know narcissism and it's just uh like you said earlier a pollution if you will it's a very harsh world we live in and that word uses freely of those that give themselves to others and obviously there are those that would stab you in the back just to get ahead of you yeah so there needs to be balance because sooner or later nothing lasts and all form disease dissolve and the society that we have built it no longer serves us we are the one that is that are serving the society so it's a really bad thing because we are declining as a human species and it seems that there is no way out if you are one against the system what can you do you just just if you similar if you would be a fish swimming against the current that's you're gonna get tired and eventually you're gonna be eaten by a bear and that's way of life if you're going against the current that's 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 not not possible so the only change that truly matters is the one that we have deep within because our reality that we experience has been built by our thoughts and emotions and the more we invest our thoughts and emotions the stronger the bigger our environment is and if what surrounds us you me and anyone that is listening to this show if you have been able to build your environment 
either consciously or not, wouldn't that mean that you are able also to change it from within? If you are able to change your thinking, that's one big step to changing your destiny. If you're able to change your emotions, if you're able to change fear to gratitude, anger to love, just imagine what huge impact that would have on your day-to-day -day life. Just imagine not being longer occupied with this fight or flight syndrome when you're just surviving each and every day and wondering what would your boss say when you're late to work or when you're stuck in traffic and you're having this mind movies in your head where everything goes wrong and sooner or later everything goes wrong because you have been in this mindset and then when it goes wrong you're like oh no surprise because you have manifested that you have drawn that to yourself and when we are in that state of survival well anything better than death is success right so that is a very bad place to start changing your life first of all you need to get a grip of your emotion so you can truly become who you were supposed to become before you got caught into this constant loop of fighting with yourself and your emotions and thoughts and your uh, attachments beliefs about who you should be that was for me and i recall those days those days were felt full of anger sadness and grief and you might wonder who i was most furious with it was me that guy that i see in the mirror each day i had this attachments of what i should say how i should look and many other things but it was my ego and my ego was growing while my soul was in the deepest level of health mm. crying each day to sleep so there was no way out because I was using my ego to live and I just had to let go just to realize that I am who I am and I cannot be anyone else. Everyone else is already taken. So the only one I can excel as is me. So I'm going to do me and then all this internal conflict from day to night just cease to exist and this is a completely different experience it's a full of bliss and wonderful emotions and just acceptance that everything is perfect as the way it should be between heaven and earth because if it wouldn't god wouldn't accept it but those challenges or those energies exist for us so we can experience who we truly are there cannot exist darkness without the light and light cannot exist that in cannot exist without the darkness it is like there cannot be only day without the night you cannot only inhale without exhaling it is actually the same thing but it allows us to experience ourselves through different means. And life is all about experiencing oneself. Yeah, I, I think back to, I, like you, I had, I had extreme anxieties, like almost like completely shutting me down at, at points in time. Uh, definitely self-medicated and uh, abused alcohol and and all these things and you know I just you know even though I've always been like a very kind empathic person it's just I've worked in some industries that were just very military very uh, oil and gas you know it's just very rough and you know, it's okay. I can bang in those places, but now I just, I'm so happy with where I'm at. Like to think back to who I was before, just not being able to handle situations properly and, and, you know, going to work, 
being angry and, you know, trying to force situations, uh, you know, project managing, force this thing to happen this certain kind of way. And just having that ego as if like I was in complete control of whatever happened hundreds of miles away on this project as if I, I could will something into happening a certain kind of way is just kind of silly now, you know, after, you know, building these businesses from scratch, uh, it's like, you know, I've just had to like, like you say, kind of give up that power to a higher power uh, because it's truly in control. And yes, we can kind of manifest things in a certain way, but to completely control something that has several people involved and, you know, several different companies and vendors and things involved in controlling, you know, uh, business in this manner, that like, you know, you can do the best that you can, but you, you got to relax. You can't control all these different things, right? I mean, we have to give this power up to, to, to who's truly in control of it, right? To a degree, you might wonder, because my journey was very similar, and I had all those roadblocks that didn't make sense at all. Yeah. I had to work much more than much more harder and much more smarter than everyone else. And I wasn't ever recognized. Yeah. And what I know right now is that it was a God sign that I'm not in the right place. Yeah. That wasn't my place to be. And God didn't want me there. And he's going to kick me in the butt till I yeah. accept that and do what he wants me to do. Yeah. And by letting go of this need to control and basically allow myself to become his puppet in the process i became a puppeteer of my own destiny yeah this is the world is based on duality and we as a humans have this tendency to like the shortcuts or the short ways to our goals but if this world is truly based on duality. Using the shortest road, we will have the longest road. It will take us the longest to achieve that goal. This is why those many get rich schemes are so popular, yet never gets rich. Never, nobody gets rich out of them. But if you take the longest road, do what's hard, till eventually it gets easy, you will have the shortest road. And this is a very similar experience. But it is hard. Having. But but it, it is. is it is a hard road. And and at times you will wonder if you have the strength, you have what it is inside you to make it past this this uh, barricade, if you will. And there will be so many more barricades behind that. But once you climb all these barricades, you climb that mountain. It's like you said it it does become the easiest path but it does not come easy right it does not if you think about it it will definitely be a complication to the process if there would be a dancer in the hall dancing greatly and inspiring others with her movements once she starts second guessing her movements she will get anxious and while she is anxious she is prone to make mistakes and soon she will fall and then no longer will anyone be impressed with her movements so either you think about dancing or you dance mm. yeah i was never a really great dancer well maybe certain I think I lost you.
Okay. Did not expect that to happen. So apparently it is not my issues that we are experiencing on the streams. And it is my time to shine and give you the best what I have within for you to transcend the limitation of your thoughts or your emotions or even your ego. What you need to realize that this is all fake. It's an illusion. It's an illusion created for you to experience yourself. So although the reality that you live in is fake, the experiences are very, very real. And it is all about experiences. That's, I'm sorry, I lost a signal over here. We have a pretty bad weather storm, but... Uh, but I guess what I'm saying is like, uh, for a person that sees what you're saying and sees kind of where we're at, you know, it's not that we're perfect or anything, but you know, we're, we've done a lot of work to be comfortable in our own skin. So let's say somebody's seeing this and they are wondering, okay, that just seems so far fetched to me. Like I can never... I can never be that comfortable with myself. They are just doubting themselves completely. Like, like I remember seeing people like, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or like, uh, Grant Cardone, like these people on stages and they're speaking. And I'm like looking at these people like, man, how in the hell are these people so comfortable with themselves that they can not only be comfortable in their own skin, but be on a stage and like pumping out, positivity because it's just really not, it's kind of a rare thing but uh but yeah so if you're looking back at your old self like what was some powerful things that you did that you can recall that uh that got you to a more comfortable place like uh there's no quick fix but what would be some quick lessons that could help speed up people by speeding up people, what I would do is actually slow them down. Yes. Truth be told, my journey wasn't that different of yours. I was an anxious kid. I was born as a person that is highly sensitive. I could feel other people's emotions and so many yes. times it is an overwhelming experience. Yes. And why is it overwhelming? Because in that particular setting, we don't want to be in we want to be somewhere else mm. with our thoughts emotions and our soul so our soul is everywhere but not in the body and that is why we are so prone to be overwhelmed by different emotions to me it got to a level where i was too anxious to do shopping so mm. i started to explore i done different modalities met different masters done different meditation but here is the thing i was searching because i thought there is something wrong with me and mm. i was searching for this holy grail to make me whole to fix me but there wasn't anything to be fixed yeah so that's a mission impossible what i need to do is just let go of my recognitions more this image of myself that i got attached to this ego of mine that is saying that you should this this you should do this and that you should be this and that and when you let go and watch as an observer what is unfolding for you it is much more pleasant journey for everyone involved, then you are the main actor on the scene because you understand the rules of life. So I believe that any steps that should be taken should get you to that place where you can let go, stop thinking, have an empty mind that is ready to be filled with glory and awesomeness of the universe. And only then you can start to live and only then your soul can start to sing and joy and fly high in the sky and how to do that is with all journeys you need to do the first step 
And the first step is usually realizing who you are. But if you are listening to that and you don't know and you would like to know, the first step would be to open the energy channels and pathways in the body. Now, there are many ways to do that. I do not recommend any advanced meditation because it is not beneficial. In fact, it's very dangerous trend. You wouldn't recommend a one-arm handstand push-up to a person that just have been in the gym for the first day. It's very similar, but this is actually worse because when you are born here, only few of us have all the channels open to channel that energy. So what we should do is open those channels. And there are many fantastic ways to do that. You could start with yoga. You could start with Kung Fu. You could even start with esoteric Tao meditation, like micro cosmic orbit, which is very good to open the pathways in the body. And that would be actually the first step to be comfortable in your body, to just let go and think, what should I do? What should I say? And, just, and allow it just to happen. Just don't interfere with your ego, your mind, your, your body, your emotions with the process and just let go, just be in the moment. And it's obviously very easy to say to someone while you're still struggling deep within, so it is about realizing that everyone here is on a different journey and on a different level of spiritual growth. All of us should strive to transcend the levels of our incarnational growth. But on the other hand, we shouldn't forget the mission that our soul choose to experience through the short time we have on this plane because it's always, always much, much shorter time than we think we have. Yeah, a, a few different things, you know. I One thing, my one of the my writings here is about peeling away the layers that make us into yes. an onion. And I feel like you know, you're kind of speaking on that. It's almost as if we're like born into a, uh, you know, we're born into a crazy world, but we're born already kind of knowing many things. And then through marketing and, and, uh, and media and, you know, environment, parents, the people around us, you know, directing us in a certain direction, we kind of stack up all these different layers of ego and all these different things on top of us. And then you get to a point where you just got to peel some of this stuff back. And, and, uh, and I feel like you're speaking to some of that. It's, uh, but it's recognizing that that's, but that's, that's what's happening to you. On Once you start shedding those layers of your subconsciousness, you realize how embarrassing it was to have them. So it's a very intimate process. And the yeah. problem with layers is that layers give more layers. It's mm. like never ending process. If you don't put a halt on it and you are not conscious, you're going to get more and more well connected to this ego and society that wants to treat you as a slave to their whim and you will be unable to live your life and then nothing really will change you will reborn as you are having the same mission having the same goals and challenges till you actually do it mm -hmm. yeah i i feel that i feel that um yeah, and we can kind of look at our, our past generations and the things that they've been through and kind of see where we're at as well. And it's, you know, it's good to see progress. Um, I feel, <laughs> especially 
empaths have been born with within families that have severe ancestor trauma or original sin or mm. many different ways. I believe it is because empaths are actually so strong that they are able to transcend that. And we are going through those challenges because our ancestors were not able. So if we will not be able, our kids will have to face those challenges as well. But the beauty about that is if one of the member of the family is able to transcend those limitations sooner or later, because the field of the family is so interconnected, other members will be able to transcend that pattern as well, be it fear, anger, or low self-esteem, which is usually the traits that affect impacts the most because mm -hmm. something usually in our childhood happened that caused us to be very self-aware about our surroundings, like we would be constantly under attack. So yeah. we would need to constantly prepare ourselves for something that might challenge our well-being. Mm -hmm. And that is what created in us this trait of being super receivers when we experience love it's experience to the fullest but when we experience the downs of the life it is also amplified and since yeah. we can attune ourselves to the energies and frequencies of the universe we often also feel anxious for no good reason and we don't know what's the cause of that so it seems being an empath as a highly sensitive person we have different set of challenges to our life and it's not different, no worse or better, maybe unique in a way because there are more and more people that are being born with this trait, which is basically a step in evolution mm -hmm. for us because yeah. for empaths doing the right thing, it's not only doing the right thing, it is the only possible solution, it's the only way to do things. Yeah. And if more people will think that way, the jump in evolution would be outstanding. There would be no wars to experience. There would be no poor or hungry people because an empath would be actually willing to share his food with that person. So usually during evolution, evolution is not about those that are going in general direction. Evolution is caused by those lonely individuals that are willing to risk and see if it works. And if it works, the general public will follow them to the new heights of growth. And this is a mission, a mission that all empaths actually share to raise the consciousness of humankind. Mm. Wow. That's some good words right there, man. Um, so I see it, you know, it's, it's, it's a muscle, right? It's, it's, we're working out, we're training, we're, we're, we're getting our, our focus better. So just like some meathead might be able to go to a gym and go pump some iron you may never go try and peel some of these layers away. So mm. what, uh, what tips and tricks can you uh, offer outside of what you've already noted uh, to help somebody work these muscles? For example, that going to a gym is also a layer. If it's started from, bad point in life it it was from luck most of the people that go to gym want to attract ladies and what they attract is attention from the guys and maybe in the past they have been bullied and this is a way for them to cope but if it's a way for them to cope it's nothing other than a layer that needs to be shredded and on this journey of shredding layers, there are so 
many and so different that each of us are struggling with many, many layers that causes this friction with us and the universe. And once there is friction, there is so much energy lost. So the only way to ensure there is no friction and there is no energy loss, you need to ensure that you are using your mind and not the mind using you. Because if you think about it, the mind is your tool. And if you allow the tool to use you, it's crazy. If you would go to a bakery and then you would see that an oven is talking to a baker and, hey, man, you need to do some more cookies. You need to, break, you need to bake some more breads. How would you think about that? That would be honestly crazy. That would be madness. But we are living in day and age where it's basically normal and those that are free of those patterns are labeled as crazy because they understand they are actually crazy, but other people even haven't recognized this. And if this becomes the new standard, it is harder and harder for those that are shredding the layers to do the work. And again, we are having this short moment Man, that was very well said, and I love it. Uh, so what layers did you have to reveal to become who you are now? Countless. I have developed a method, actually, to allow me to see more deeply into my brain as I have devoted so much time and energy to study different modalities. I have meditated over seven, 7,000 hours at least. Wow. The last time I counted and I don't count no more. Yeah. So it's all about what is stored in our subconsciousness through the social programming, through our genes mm -hmm. and through what we have gained through our lives here. So I developed a method that once you reach this alpha state of consciousness, that when you can speak directly to your subconsciousness and basically when your brain slows down mm -hmm. so it can absorb more data, make better decisions, and it is the first step of any psychic gifts, I programmed a pattern of movement, which is basically mm -hmm. me grasping my hands like this. I don't think you can see that. Okay. Uh, Yes, just like that. If I grasp my hand like that, I am reaching deeper and deeper state of the mind, deeper than before. And I am shredding any negative or unwanted layer of the mind. And that allows me to be very conscious because with without my consciousness, I wouldn't know what's unwanted or wanted or if it's attractive or not attractive. But when I touch my fingers and I have this thought like, mm, because it brings to my awareness what is, what is serving me and what is not serving me. And usually people have this tendency to glorify what is not serving them. They literally think that it is there for the benefit like they would be stressed and they would say oh but this stressful feeling makes me like i'm caring about this and it makes me a better person in yeah. truth you're just killing yourself and you glorify yeah. that and yeah. you're not even making better decisions through that yeah but we are addicted to ourselves those emotions to those juice running through our veins that we, we just can't let go and this is a way that i made for me to let go so i can be conscious of who am i and what i need to shred what i need to let go and once you start that process it becomes very intimate and you realize what an asshole you are mm. what you what wrong you done and so many different things that you're just embarrassed that it took yeah. you so long to get yeah. here like wow really I yeah. could be here way, way sooner, but I was mm. stupid. I, was, I had ego not in check. And yeah. 
Yeah, I I definitely went through that, and occasionally I uh, find myself, you know, flipping away, and you just got to catch yourself. So it's good to have like a mudra or something, something that is a movement with your body that you just recognize. Okay, it's time to do this thing, and it makes you think on that level. Uh, I have different mudras as well, and and I've always done things with my hands. And coming from an Italian family, like we talk with our hands a lot, mm. you know, and it's like, you know, but but I've always been doing different things with my hands since I was a kid. And then I grew up and I'm like, OK, wow. You know, like uh, in Indian culture, they have a ton of different mudras that they do that uh, help with healing, help with mm. wealth, other things, you know, all sorts of different mudras that you can do with mm. your hands. So. I, I find it very interesting uh, the the powers that our body has that are just kind of laughed at in a sense in this world, and it's you know these things have been around for thousands of years. If not, mudras are actually way to energize particular pathways in the body found by the yogis. Yeah, and yoga, what is nowadays, wasn't what it was in the past because yeah. once it got imported to the west it lost its roots it became another fitness class yeah. and back in the day in india yogis weren't approached because people were afraid of them because they were people that were striving to have superpowers right and many of them did because they understand the body and that the way of the cosmos because we are part of the cosmos and the cosmos is within us mm. and we, if we are able to know those secrets that lay hidden domain without within us we are able to know the secrets of the universe as well and that is the basis of the mudra and it's also very similar to what you have in acupressure similar mm. as well just to move energy from one point to the other uh, my technique is not really a mudra. It can work with any pattern that you have, but I have all different trigger points on different finger of what I actually want to achieve. Mm. And it is like very deep internal programming that can be triggered within just flick of the fingers because the reaction is so strong because it has been programmed on the alpha level at least. I have something for impasse too where you just became immune to negative emotions, negative mm. suggestions, thoughts, energies and frequencies. And as a little something, a precognition gift that you always know what to do because once you're in the alpha state, your third eye abilities are starting to awaken and it's very easy to train them in those states of mind. So I programmed a lot of things that would be labeled as using the channel of psychic mediums or those gifted with the third eye abilities. And I find them very helpful. Mm. And also what I always say, that empathy is just a first stage to telepathy because thought mm. is also energy. If someone can sense energy in form of emotion or a vibration, sooner or later, he will be able to sense the energy of a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I haven't really talked to any guests about these things, but yeah, I've, I've always uh, been able to sense, you know, different energies, the second I walk in a room or, or, you know, it doesn't matter how many people are in there, but, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I've always been able to almost kind of think what other people are thinking almost. Mm -hmm. And so That's I've never really been told anybody that to be honest with you, but. Uh, but yeah. Honestly, I kind of knew it yeah. when I met you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And I also know it's very hard to, come forward with those knowledge because in my scenario i was afraid that if they would know that i know they would throw rocks at me they would treat mm. me as an odd one and do some kind of a witch hunt so yeah. i always had it very close to me yeah. never really shared it apart yeah. from really close group of my friends 
but eventually I start I needed to start to be who I am and if some people don't like it that's perfectly fine they just they aren't meant to be in my life or they are meant to be in my life as a learning that I should be just to myself and I should treat myself well if it doesn't mean I'm any worse than anyone else just because I have those gifts mm -hmm. and many of us impacts impacts things that way that we are an odd one and it's so overwhelming with those emotions it's and that triggers a very vicious cycle because we interact with another being and all out of sudden we overwhelm with those negative emotions and we just freeze our belly sinks we stop breathing we look stupid and the guy's like, oh, what is wrong with this dude? And <laughs> then after we sponge this negative emotion, because we are like, we're gonna do and we're gonna do anything that is possible to end that interaction. So we do, we sponge that negative emotion. And then let's say we go home, and what happens is is we have this mind movies in our head that this interaction should be completely different. We should set something else we should done something else and like yeah next time this happens i'm gonna be prepared and yeah. guess what? <laughs> that situation comes again was it any different no we <laughs> still froze our belly sinks we stop breathing and we look stupid and that repeats so many times that eventually we lost any mm. faith and respect that we have for ourselves because we actually didn't get to the root cause of the issue. We were trying to put a band-aid on the broken knee and obviously that is not working. We should get to the bottom of the issue. Why is that happening? And usually it's happening because we have a pent-up energy, usually fear or anger, which is very similar in nature, truth be told. Um, fear is just another level of anger and it impacts different organs as well. And if we have it within, it means if, are we gonna anger someone by being ourselves, And then we have fear because we want to do that, but we are afraid to do that. So it's a never ending story with that, with those emotions. On the other hand, you can simply just let go of those surplus of energy by rooting your body by releasing the surplus of negative emotions, you are able to let go and be in the moment, which is all about what we should be. Also, any sound therapy, which is super beneficial, especially for cleansing the organs, if done correctly, like uh, from different religions and philosophies. In yoga, they had, um, Ayurveda, they had the sound therapy for energy centers, in China, they in Tao, they have sound therapy for the internal organs. And now from Tibet to the Western, we have sound therapy as well. And it's all very good if you use it consciously, especially if you work on the energy center, because most of us don't know when where energy is bent up. So, for example, we're going to use all oh, the crown level and we're going to oh, work on our crown, but for most people, the energy gets stuck around the third level. So you're gonna actually cause yourself harm if you're gonna mm -hmm. operate on the crown and like a lot of crown because the body doesn't know how to cope with that energy mm -hmm. and it's gonna damage your internal organs. And what's worse is that heat will get to your head and create mm -hmm. this illusion that you're spiritually advanced and mm -hmm. You're worse than a novice because that mm. gets your spiritual ego. You think you know everything, but you know less than nothing, and it's very hard to overcome that. Wow. So, you know, always a tool. If we are using a tool, it's perfectly fine because tools are for us to be used. But if the tool is using us, like the ego could be using us, it's very bad because then we are stuck and there are no possibilities for growth and to experience who are we truly and we are just stuck man yeah man i love those shares that's that's some good info right there um and we're talking about layers talking about being stuck what is the next layer 
for you to remove? Like you would have a garden and you're a good farmer. If you see a seed that you want, you're going to nurture it. But if you see something that you don't want, like a weed, you're going to weed it out so the plants can grow. So by me wanting to remove something, what am I removing? It is actually my ego growing and my spirit is decreasing. So by not wanting, I actually escape that pattern because wanting, whatever you put after want becomes sour and mm. makes separation from you and the universe because what you want is to want and you will have more of wanting. Have you ever had, had someone that has a red Lamborghini to say, I want a red Lamborghini? No, because he already has a red Lamborghini. So that is very similar process. And how you do one thing is how you do all things. Mm. So by not shredding layers, you actually do shred layers. But you need to have the right methods to do that. And if you have the right methods, you start from the basics as you would build a house. You start with foundation. You don't start with the roof because with weak foundation, the roof will fall on your head while you're eating a dinner with your family. And that's something that you don't want. So the basics are always needed. And when you have the basics established and you have that foundation and you're doing your daily routine and you see what's holding you back, you can just let go of it negate it, utilize it, and make use of internal alchemy and make that energy something that could serve you. And that is the process I actually follow to internal alchemy, qigong, and many other ways that I'm using to transcend my soul using hard work of the body. Yeah, it's uh, I've always been very unorthodox. And so counter in intuition, if you will, is kind of what we're talking about. It's like um, it's easier for me to grasp it maybe than somebody else. But it's just like like a counterintuitive to what you would think. You know, if, if I want this thing, I already have this. You know, you have to be in this belief if you want to be a millionaire then you you'll never get there if you're wanting to be one you have to be one mentally and physically and emotionally uh to to be one and it's, and i've heard that from millionaires and billionaires is you know they get asked the question all the time how how did you become a millionaire a billionaire well, I had to be one in my mind before I could be one. Wanting to be one is not being one. You'll never be one. It's very similar to this pattern that once you get bitten by a dog, you're going to be afraid of the dog. And the dog can sense it, so he's going to bite you. So you're afraid of the dog dog senses that and he's gonna bite you there is mm. no way out from that thinking if you're gonna be stuck in this pattern you're gonna be you're gonna get bitten by the dog for the rest of your life so you need to change within if you want to be a millionaire you need to think like a millionaire you need to act like a millionaire just one thing doesn't won't get you places Maybe you have some internal programming that you can become a millionaire if somebody gives you a gift, like you have a late aunt from your mother's side and she mm. passed away and she gave you this huge, huge endorsement. That might work for you, but for me, I don't, I wouldn't even want that because first of all, would I be ready for that? And then again, more money, more problems. So it is a tool that should be used by us, but if we don't know how to use this tool called money, it's going to take advantage of us. And this is the reason why so many people that win the lottery 
once they win the lottery, but they still have been poor inside. It doesn't take them long before they are poor again. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so where with what you're doing now, you're you're helping people, you're coaching people. Uh, where do you ultimately want to go? I don't want to go anywhere, like. Because everyone has different journey. My journey is about transcending the cosmos that I have within. And that means attachments to myself, to my thoughts, to my goals, to my body and even my soul. So I can be free of that to transcend to a completely different level. And each time I have a goal, I plan to do something. God shows me that it is meaningless, it is stupid, it is a product of my ego and it's slowing me down. It's basically like this saying, all flowers bloom in due time and a flower does not plan when to bloom. When he is ready, he just blooms. Yeah. And actually I think that would be a layer I want to shred. So I don't, um, I never plan because I call it Feel good procrastination. If you have energy to plan, you also have energy to work. And if you don't have energy to work, you should rest and recuperate mm -hmm. and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that as well. It's, and I tell my wife that it's like, well, while you're awake and you're focused, get your work done. When you're mm -hmm. tired, sleep. I don't care if it's noon or what time it is. If you're tired, go, go get some rest and hit it again when you're ready. Um, I found peace in nature. So you're talking about a flower blooming. Like uh, I lived on a river a few years ago um, and I would go down there once, twice, three times a week and just go jump off in this river and go fishing, swimming. You know, there was nobody around for miles and it was just me, you know, of course, I'll be packing a pistol or something in case something came out at me. But uh, but just being out there in nature and and nobody around and having that water flowing and just going and and sitting on some big boulders in the middle of a river and, you know, throwing a fishing pole in or, you know, uh, swimming or, you know, uh, even just the walking up and down these mountains and, and hills and things like <clears throat> watching different plants grow. You know, when I come back, I visit them, I see them, their growth. Like all of that really helped me peel away layers that I had with like alcoholism and stuff like this, where mm -hmm. I felt like I could never get away from like whiskey. Mm -hmm. And, and finally, you know, with that, you know, year that I spent, I, I still haven't drank whiskey in years, you know, and it's like, and I, I don't really even drink beer. I might have one or two a year, but it, you know, it's just like, it's just crazy to me. Like I never thought I'd be able to get away from that. And just the power of like being, you know, by yourself, but, mm. but the power of nature and just, watching its growth and and watching fish swim and realizing that they're not just some dumb fish in a river they are actually very smart and just realizing and appreciating you know nature in in its all uh how how much growth i had in that time period was was amazing to me looking back on it like you know but uh but for me, if I was to like focus on becoming a better version of myself quickly, I would say that nutrition is is the first 